first and foremost, uh, if some of you guys know, I, uh, I got, I, it's like, uh, I had to post another event for this morning because the original one was for this morning. Damien emails me and says, Hey, uh, are we doing it today or October 12th? And I'm like, man, this guy can't get his stuff together. He, he should just look at the event. And I go, crap, I did it wrong. But here is how cool Damien is. I said, what do you want to do? Like, I'm so sorry. I messed up the dates. And he goes, let's just do both. I mean, what, what's the big deal? Let's just do both. And let's just see what happens. And it's like, the guy is down for whatever. He's been like that. I've, I've gotten back and forth with him, speaking via email about doing an event together and all that. And the guy, I mean, literally, like, let's do an event tomorrow. And he goes, cool. How are you going to fly here? He'll figure it out. He's, he's one of the most favorite qualities of Damien. And speaking of Mr. Damien, this is one of the original books that I read on the principles, right? I didn't even know this was a principle before I even knew what principles were. This was one of the original books. And I actually got to talk to, got to talking to him a while back ago. And he had that same energy that I'm talking about today. The guy is just a, kick-ass dude that knows a lot about the principles, but one of the most important parts that I think is really important is he knows how to have it on a down-to-earth, normal level, person-to-person -person conversation, which I think is really useful and more importantly needed in our community. And so for me, I'm really, really excited to have him on to kind of Talk about anything and everything. We're going to go, this one's going to be a little bit wherever it goes because Damien has a ton of insight not from just knowing the principles but principles in business uh the science behind the principles why why he actually thinks it's it's not just relevant spiritually but what the mechanics of behind it and why why it actually does do what it does or why 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 we experience life the way we do and he's also a really good dj so we, maybe we'll, we'll see him do something like that on, on the on the call <laughs> But, you know, without further ado, let me get Damien, let me get Damien on the call. You there? Hold on. Damien, you there? Muted, unmuted. Muted, unmuted. unmuted, unmuted. <laughs> How are you, bud? I'm really well. Yeah. Good. So yeah. Look, before we begin, Damien, how did you get into, like, why are you here? How'd you get into the principles? So um, some of you will know my story. Some of you won't. So I'll just do you a, a, a brief kind of summation of, of how I kind of fell into it. Um, February 26, 2011, I heard Jamie Smart on stage say something along the lines of, it's not what you think, it's the fact that you think. And I'd been a seeker. You know, I'd been trying to find solace and peace in my own life when everything in it appeared that I had in my life was would be giving me happiness, you know, half a million pound house and a six figure income and 2.5 kids, uh, not literally. Um, and I wasn't, I was miserable and I had PTSD and um, OCD and all sorts of crazy stuff going on in my head. And so I was looking to, to, to do stuff to, to kind of, and take stuff. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about alcohol and drugs. I mean, I was being given stuff by the psychiatrist, you know, all sorts of medication and none of it was working. I mean, it would be temporary, but it wouldn't work um, for a long, longer period of time. So I was always seeking for some, I was seeking for peace of mind. I was looking for peace of mind. And I heard Jamie say, whatever he said, it was a quote from Sid Banks. And, um, I, and I, I partly blame the fact that I'd had a hangover and I wasn't really listening because usually I'd be there with my pen and paper, you know, trying to work it out and just trying to really kind of understand it. And because I wasn't, because I was just listening as if I was listening to music, I actually heard something. I actually heard something beyond the words. And I remember going up to Jamie in the break and I just said, what did you, what did you say? What was that Sid Banks thing that you mentioned? And, and um, yeah, it was, so, it, was, it was one of them. It doesn't matter which one it was. It's not in the words. Um, and I then spent the next two months trying to work out who Sid Banks was and why this thing had had an impact on me. And um, I came across Jack Pransky, read his book, went to training with him. And, and over a period of time, I, I just kind of started to understand what they were pointing to and with, actually. And um, 
it occurred to me about six months into my journey that a really good way to kind of learn this and understand it at a deeper level would be to write about it. And because I couldn't believe that more people hadn't, it's, you know, you, you know, when you kind of get that first penny drop and you just think, Oh, why don't more people know about this? <laughs> What's happening there? Let's see if we can sort that one out. Well, that's me, you know, it's like, well, let's see what we can do about that one. Um, so I decided to write a book about it and um, yeah, that's, that's, that's really how I came across it. And I guess part of the reason for this call was, was me writing that post on Facebook about, um, when I saw the Center for Sustainable Change had shut down, I was like, oh, that's a real shame. And, you know, I'm, 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 I had a realization a few months ago that the principles was a cornerstone of, of the whole picture. It, it's, a, it's a fundamental piece in the whole, I mean, I'm, I, I like to understand things, um, but it, it's, it's a piece of the jigsaw, but it's holding up all the other pieces. And, uh, and I've been doing a lot of kind of research into the, into the form you know, the science behind energy, what, uh, how quantum mechanics works, uh, you know, what, what, is, what does that mean? What is the formulas? What is the form? And it just occurred to me that it was, it was kind of like the linchpin piece within that jigsaw puzzle. And I just, uh, I thought, well, wouldn't that be interesting to, rather than try and say that it's different from everything, why not? Because it isn't actually, it's part of everything. And, and approach it from that point of view. Cause I know that when I first came across this, it was like, no, 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 it's not, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's something completely different. And I, I heard a story about how a record in the, the, in the 2003, I think it was, that everyone said was gonna be a, a big hit. And every, people, people know it. it's, it's a song called Hey Ya by Outkast, right? And the story behind this just made me just go, oh my God, that's where we're going wrong with this, right? And basically, simple story, it was, uh, it was predicted to be a hit by the radio stations that had just created this algorithm that would tell whether a song would be a hit or not. And it was a guaranteed hit. Like the algorithm basically said, oh, it's going to score 100, you know, it's like, so they started giving it to all these radio stations. And all the radio stations started playing it and people hated it. They hated it. They have this thing in radio called stickability and they can measure how good a track is by whether people turn off or stick with it. And stickability is slightly different from predicting whether something's a hit or not. So for instance, guys will say that we hate Celine Dion, but if we hear it, we'll listen to it. We won't turn it off. It's quite a sticky thing to listen to, even though we say we hate it. And essentially what was happening with this track was it was different and that's why people didn't like it. So they, they changed tactic and what they did was they started because they, they you know, said it's going to be a hit. So they started putting it in between sticky songs, right? They would take, you know, um, a Maroon 5 and Nine Inch Nails stick it in between that song. And basically they started to make it sticky and it became, yeah, I think it sold 5 million copies worldwide because people started to get it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of where we've been going wrong with the principles because we're, we're basically saying it's outcast, but you know, hey, yeah, as opposed to, well, it's kind of like Maroon 5, only a bit of an upgrade. <laughs> it just occurred to me, it was like, well, that would be a really interesting way to kind of do this. So I put the post on and I had one response and I thought, yeah, okay, well, that, that's not particularly good. So that's kind of where I'm coming from um, with this. And I've got a load of other stuff based around that, which is, I think, actually quite useful. Um, for people maybe are new to the principles or people that have been around it for a long time and just stuff you know, around the energy side and how it all kind of makes sense and fits into the equation. But that's a very brief introduction. Have I gone too far off piece? No, there? I think that was rad. I actually really like that stickability. I'd never even considered that. Um, now let, let's, let's get down to the specifics. What does this have to do with the, I, I mean, I get it. And I'm, I'm asking you as a, as someone that's supposed to ask questions, how does that transfer over to the principles, in your opinion? With, okay. with the, with the so metaphor just, you just put, or the stickability? Yeah. So let me just, well, that post that I put on, for anyone who didn't see it, I basically said, for the, with, the, with, the, with the closure of the Center for Sustainable Change, you know, how's about we, change, we try a different approach? And obviously, you know, there are lots of different approaches going on at the moment with, with what's going on in business and, you know, what Mara is doing over in the States. And, um, you know, so we're chipping away. I think that's fair to say we're chipping away. Um, I said, well, what about an approach where instead of saying, you know, this isn't, 
mindfulness because you know i've done a lot of mindfulness stuff and there's a mindfulness is pretty similar um why don't we just say well let's welcome people in because mindfulness has been around a long time now you know it's taken a long time to get the traction that it that it's had but everyone's talking about it so um i remember kathy casey once said you know when you're working with people meet them where they are and and i kind of figure that's what we're not doing we're not meet, we're meeting people and we're saying yeah 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 but we got this other thing that's way better and it's like a, well that sounds a bit different i'm i'm going to kind of go with what i know and, and and go with that approach and it was just an idea that we maybe you know tag along the tail of something like mindfulness or you know meditation or, or yoga or something where, and and again when we talk about the energy i'll i'll, I'll kind of show you where this all fits in because it's all the same stuff anyway um and 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 then we get into the conversation that way because in my mind um i mean i can only speak from experience and this is the other thing so whenever i do a workshop or a training or whatever i just say look there's, there's one truth that i know and that's that i don't know right that is the absolute truth i know that i don't know but i've got an idea of things and i've seen things that have helped me you know i've, I've had so much rubbish that's happened in my life even recently where people just go, how, how, are you, how are you navigating it like you are? Because it's the same when I'm just not taking my thinking seriously. Well, that's really useful to know. So the principles have pointed me towards that. Well, that's really useful to know, you know, when you've got your kids being taken away by an ex-wife who basically doesn't want them to see your new girlfriend and you have to go back to court and do all that sort of stuff, but you're navigating it. You're not waking up in the middle of the night and having panic attacks and anxiety even though the thinking's there you're just going well i'm just not going to pay attention to it so you know to me the principles is is the cornerstone because it's showing you how the system is operating okay i think we can get into trouble when we start to get too precious over the language yeah so as an example we live in the world of form right there's no doubt I mean, I've been in a group in a room full of engineers and I've said, look, no, none of this makes sense. Either we're infinite or we come from nothing. You can't, neither makes sense. So we're not going to be able to understand that fully. Even Sid said it. It's like, you, know, you wouldn't, he saw something that he said you couldn't put into words. Great. Well, you know, let's not bother. But words are what we got. And that's metaphors. They don't, they're not the thing. They're pointing to the thing. But we live in the world of form. We live in the world of energy which is slowed down to a vibration where it appears solid okay the formless from which everything comes is just energy at a much higher vibration right in science that's what it is yeah take an example water water at neutral is uh, is liquid you slow the vibration slow the energy down a vibration enough it becomes ice it becomes solid you you make it more rapid you heat it up and it becomes steam it goes for it gets for it goes from the form to the formless and kind of the same thing happens with us you know we are energy at a slow vibration when this kind of then makes sense of meditation and exercise right so if you think of it exercise we're speeding energy up we're, we're making it hotter we are essentially bringing our bodies the form up to the spirit up to the formless by by doing exercise it's why we feel better with meditation we're doing the opposite we're taking our spirit we're settling our formless down to the base level of the form right that's just playing with energy that's scientific that makes sense so it makes sense that when you do meditation you feel better it makes sense that when you do exercise you feel better because you're actually playing with energy you're aligning energy because that's all we're doing we're just aligning energy so that's kind of a starting point from where you, you say, well, okay, well, there is this thing called energy because that's all we are. And if we can play with it, we can do things with it. Now, to me, we're in the world of form. Yeah, we are, I think, personally responsible for whatever thoughts come into our heads, which is where the principles is such a great linchpin. Beautiful linchpin. I've always said we're co-creators because we're part of that which created us. Therefore, we must be co-creators. That just makes logical sense to me. But if you punch me in the face, I'm not going to say God did it. I'm not going to say I did it. I'm going to say you did it. 
if I run someone over, I'm not going to say God did it. I'm not even going to say infinite intelligence did it. I'm going to say I did it and I'm going to take responsibility. We live in the world of form. We have to pay bills. We have to do work. We have, we have stuff to do. Well, that's a great starting point. So I'd rather start from there and say, well, what's that about? What's the energy behind that? How does that work? And take it up to a higher level of consciousness, however you want to call it. Now, what I've seen is that people get really messed up with the words. And you, I just say to people, it's like, whatever words make sense to you. You know, so if you want to call it consciousness, great. If you want to call it mind, great. If you want to call it infinite intelligence, great. If you want to call it God, great. Make, do what makes sense to you. Use whatever language makes sense to you. But if you can get people into that space where they see something that makes sense from, a, from, from their own understanding and their own insight, that is when I think you start to make a shift. That's when you start, that's when they start to go out into life and things start to become easier. And that, that again, that's just from my own experience. If I, if I didn't know about the principles, I might have come across something else. But because I've seen the principles are part of, they, they, they explain how stuff happens. They're a really good explanation about how stuff happens. It allows me to navigate life more easily. And, you know, Sid said some pretty cool stuff. He just said, go live your life. And that, you know, why don't we just go and do that from that space? So much nicer. Um, you know, the stuff around love makes so much sense because love is a higher vibration. When we feel Reiki makes sense, it, all the stuff starts to make sense when you use the principles as a cornerstone, but you bring the science in, you bring the understanding in about how the form and the formless are kind of put together. And that's really exciting to me because I'm, I'm open to hearing new things. You know, I'm open, open to understanding new things. I'm not, I'm not dogmatic about it. I'm not, you know, principles is it, nothing else matters. You know, we're all one, nothing else matters. It's like, well, yeah, sometimes you can see that, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can really feel part of everything. And other times you can feel really separate. What ultimately matters? Well, I coach entrepreneurs. So I help people go out there and do stuff which is good to the world, good for the world. Why wouldn't you do that? You do great stuff. Loads of people do great stuff. Write books, create businesses, help people, love people. Do whatever you need to do, but it just, you know, have fun doing it as well. What was the question? Was it, what's my name? I don't know what the question was, but that was a perfect answer. So, you know, I, I have to give it to you. You're, you're, you're kind of turning the, this, it's almost like you're turning the community on its head because you're starting with the form instead of the formless, which a lot of times we, we try to stay away from the form and talk about mind consciousness and thought. So it was kind of interesting to hear your point of view. It actually, um, you know, we have Dominic on, on this call as well, which we're going to be doing a webinar, but he also comes from a, a different place. Both you guys know the principles inside and out, if not more than most people, yet you guys are open and willing to see a broader perspective, which I think is so important, which I try to do as well. But there is this thing in our community that kind of shuns it. it it's almost like if what you just said is... Uh, is heretic is that what, what's the word what's the word it's like you're not supposed to say heresy. it heresy. yeah heresy because um burn him. yeah i would burn you at the stake the, the the thing about it is it's almost like there's a sense of purity in the principles and what you're doing is kind of loosening the grips to that purity because we're only supposed to talk about it like this now can i ask you have you received any resistance from what you've said do you feel like you're being uh, a little bit of an outcast by what you're saying or you don't care or where's your stance or how, how do people view your point of view? Um, yeah, I don't care. Um, I think I am. I think I'm an outcast, but outcast was the name of the band that wrote that tune. So <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Bringing that full circle. That's awesome. Look, I think, I think it's a good time right now just to pause and see if anyone has to, wants to ask a question because I, I can keep going. So if anyone wants to have a, like, okay, what did you mean by this? Or I, I, I didn't understand this or whatever. Does anyone have any ideas, thoughts or anything? Or should we have him keep going? Do, Dominic. Hey, hi, Mark. How are you? <clears throat> Damien, sorry. Call me Damien. 
<laughs> I, 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 when I see the two names, I'm always like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I have a pound for everyone that's done that, 78 pounds. <laughs> so, uh, Amir, you said something too, uh, and um, about sort of you, you uh, contextualize uh, what Damon was just, Damien was just saying about how um, you go at it from the form, let's say, instead of a formless. And um, I guess I, I also, I mean, I have an interest in that, right, in the form versus uh, formless. And I noticed uh, when you get to the 3P community, it's suddenly the form is all bad and all the good is looking in this direction. There's nothing good looking in the other direction. And so it's kind of like, you know, points you the other way. Um, and meanwhile, it's all one thing. So the form is spiritual too, right? And it's, it's, a, it's an expression of what's formless. And so it seems to me that you could get there any way you like. So it's, it's it, 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 because there's nothing but spiritual, nothing but formless. And some of it, as uh, Damien said, is, is simply uh, the same energy in a more slowed down, condensed form. And the other is a more rapid vibration. But you're not talking about different things. So I, I just kind of wanted to put that in there. So whichever, and so when I think about other people and hearing other people, you know, I'm a follower of Abraham Hicks and uh, I remember my big enlightenment experience in my 20s was Landmark Education and doing the forum and uh, so Werner Erhard's work. And, um, and then I, li I listen to people in the 3P community They'll talk about how, you know, they did an NLP until they woke up. Oh, NLP, I was so in the wrong direction, they'll say. You know, and then I woke up, right? It's like, what are you saying? Why would you, why wouldn't NLP be exactly the right thing for you at that time? And, and, and just even you discovering NLP, where do you think that inspiration even came from? For you to get into an NLP and start studying it and all of that. It, it's, that, that could be inspiration from mind that led you by the path of least resistance to the thing that would most clearly speak to you, which was NLP at that time, at that point in your life. <laughs> and so I kind of have always been uncomfortable when I'll hear people dismissing things. You know, and Byron Katie and Eckhart Tolle and those sort of, you know, this, I used to be into that and then I woke up, right? It's, so something about that has made me always a bit uncomfortable. Just wanted to throw that comment out. No question really, but maybe I love a reaction that. to it. No, I think, I think it does go along the lines of what, uh, I believe what, what Damien's saying. And I actually really liked, um, the analogy of the vibrations of, of different, like the water turning into ice, but the vibration behind it's the same thing. I've never heard it in that context. Um, I will tell you, I used to be one of those guys that thought I woke up because I'm no longer doing NLP, and then I, I learned the principles. But what I'm realizing, I'm still waking up. It, that, that doesn't end. Like, I keep thinking, so... I started a question. Oh, it must not be NLP then. Oh, then I did Byron Katie and I woke up again and it was like, now you, you introduced me to uh, Abraham Hicks a while back and I'm like, oh, I'm waking up again. And I went, wait a minute. The common denominator isn't the actual thing that we're doing. It's the capacity we have to wake up. So the principles by themselves actually aren't waking me up. The capacity to wake up is waking me up over and over and over again. And so the it, it puts less emphasis on my journey and puts more of the power, the fact, the fact of me being able to wake up moment to moment, which Damien's pointing to, whether you're looking at it in the form or formless, I don't care. You can wake up wherever you're at. What are you doing? Spending your time trying to figure it out this one single way. I think Damien, I think you're hitting something, both you and Dominic, I think you guys are hitting on something that's absolutely vital and important that I just kind of saw even more right now on this call. 
there's there's something that Dominic said, which uh, I, I think it could be kind of beneficial just to just to kind of contemplate this for a second. It's very easy to think about the formless and the formless separate because we talk about them as if they're two distinct things. And it's, I think for me, it's harder to imagine the formless, sorry, from the form coming out of the formless, even though that's how it happens, right? So the, the, the form comes out of the formless. The power of thought creates thoughts. You know, nothing gives us infinity, yeah? From zero to infinity. So, but it's quite hard to get our head around that, isn't it? I actually think it's easier as a starting point to, to consider that, well, you don't even have to consider it. You just look at yourself in the mirror, right? You are an example of form and formless in, in one thing. You are for the form and the formless. You, you have a body and you have a spirit and you have the power of thought and you have thoughts. You are a, a radio set for the, for, for the, for the music. Yeah. So, um, and to me, this is why the principles are a cornerstone because basically the principles are saying like it's, it's happening through you. It's happening through you. It's the, the direction, the process, my, the new book, which I'm writing, uh, this year, I've changed it from the world peace equation to one direction because I just thought, you know, it'd get more hits on, on YouTube. Um, honestly, I've got to work on my comedy. It's really bad. I actually laughed, but I was on mute. I laughed too, but I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, it is, it's, uh, and, 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 and that kind of, again, that's more of like a scientific way of kind of looking at it. It's kind of, well, um, we are, we, we are born. We don't know how that will happen, but you know, this, this, this form comes out of something which wasn't here a million years ago. And I know, you know, even science says that, that the energy doesn't dissipate, it just changes form. But I don't remember the dinosaurs, even in past life regression, I don't remember them. Um, and I don't remember what happened before the Big Bang. And you know, if you, if you look at the science, we are basically being governed by bacteria. Bacteria are doing everything. They're telling us what to think, they're telling us what to do. They're just trying to survive. You know, as long as we're having sex and eating, they're happy. And as soon as we've, you know, we're too old to have sex, it will try and kill us. So that's, you know, the bacteria are running the show. So um, I don't want to kind of hedge my bets and say, yeah, I'm going to be here forever and I can come back and do this a million times. Although that kind of also makes sense to me. I'd rather go, do you know what? I probably do only have this one life and this one experience as me. Therefore, I'm going to kind of fill it to the full brim of being excited and fun and having great experiences and doing amazing things and getting up on stage and trying comedy when I don't even think I'm funny, let alone anyone else thinking I'm funny. Um, and doing just like crazy stuff because why not, you know? Um, so, but let's face it, you know, Sid definitely saw something and he said the day you die, you're going to be laughing your head off. So I'm going to hedge my bets. I'm going to say, I'm going to go for both. <laughs> and fill my life with blue, and I'm going to have fun when I die too. I love it. And we had, a, we had a hand raised with Renata, if you uh, want to chime in. Uh, the beautiful part is whatever I'm thinking often, somebody else is articulating it and vice versa. So it was just my take on um, not getting caught up either in the dogma because it really is an experience. That's what I've learned, uh, especially well, specifically today with many of you on this call who've uh, taken time to uh, be with me. And, uh, but specifically with the host and the guest, Damien, um, you're actually one of the few books I did get, and Amir's too, uh, on the three principles. And the part that drew me was um, the same way that the book, um, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, was by somebody who did study the three principles and never uttered a word about 3P, mind, consciousness, and thought. And there's everything, it, it's fine. I went through a, a rebellious phase of, oh my God, Sid only did not only read one book of Sid, you know, that's not important. What, what, who, how he contributed and who he is, the same as each and every one of us, is we don't need to be fixed, it's already working. You've all said that at the beginning. I now experience it instead of trying to figure it out, understand it, and get a PhD in it. 
I now experience it uh, through my heart, mainly as a compassionate understanding, which means shared humanity, being present. And I learned that with all of you. And I think that's really cool. It's geeky, geeky great to be able to articulate it. And sometimes I go into that, uh, about the neurons, figuring it out and that kind of stuff when my brain's not all fucked up like today. But that's not what's important. Uh, I think it's beautiful. And I'm very grateful to get to know uh, Damien as uh, not just the guy who wrote the book today, because you've always been kind uh, on Facebook. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Renata. And I, and I think that's, to me, the, the biggest thing. And I think that's why the group that we're in, the what the F are the principles resonates for people, because the original intent of that is to be with humans, be with people, laugh, sit by a fireplace. And then if we want to talk about the principles too, let's do it and see where it goes. And, and I think that's what is attractive about Damien and Dominic and the way that they're speaking. It's kind of bringing it back to all of it's good. It's all good. And from that point of view, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how, how it shows up for us, what we can do differently. And um, who knows, who knows what, what, where this goes. Uh, but I, I love it, Damien. Yeah. If I may, uh, spontaneously this week, uh, I shared this understanding or the simplicity of it without talking 3P. And I was in a, there's a mental health refuge, like there's a little cafe bistro and they get homemade soup and stuff. And some people that are members, I was a member, I am a member, because when I was physically bedridden, they thought I had depression and then they thought I had severe dissociation and then they thought this and that. And now I'm supposedly only got something benign like anxiety, something, something but I don't see myself as mentally ill anymore. And they changed the diagnosis and everything. And that used to be my calling card for lack of a better word. And all of that has fallen by the wayside. And the, the cool part, it used to tee me off. I'm going to try to be polite when people would go, it'll be effortlessly. And here I was sweating and having a, uh, what was it? Um, uh, innervation and shingles and all that kind of stuff because I was going on overdrive in my senses all the time. And uh, the cool part is this week, there's this young man who's medicated and he's got the official tag. And with that comes the community that makes him the shared humanity. So trying to talk intellectually is not going to cut it. And he was happy this week. Um, I went to get uh, a bite to eat and he was happy that I was there and he was all sure with that and said, hi, hi, like he wanted to, he, he thought, he, it felt like he felt invisible but wanted to come out. And I turned around and we started talking and as I used to uh, do in the victimhood uh, mode, he goes, well, you know how it is, I'm like that in my brain, I can't control it and he started. And because we had rapport, and I genuinely care for this young man, I've always seen him as beautiful. I didn't have to do a darn thing. He's a beautiful human being. And uh, I just went, ah. I said, you know, it's cool. I said, and then we have this expression in French. Um, it's almost akin to the F thing, le feu au cul, which means it's uh, the fiery version of having your pissed off, but it, it's your pants that are burning. That's, that, that's the expression. And um, I joked and I said, did you ever get really, really pissed off, you know? And you felt like, you know, everything was on fire on you, specifically in this case, the pants. And he says, yeah. And all of a sudden, I, I realized that everything that I've been hearing and listening was part of the, way, the new story, for lack of a better word, that was running through my brain. And I just went, oh, I said, yeah, and it feels really real. But the cool part is, and I said, you know, I was really pissed off. And I said, are my pants on fire? He goes, come on, they're not, you're silly. You know? And I said, oh, thank God we got that part too. Otherwise we'd be running around, you know, 
jumping in the sink, they were washing dishes, jumping and putting our behind our ass in the sink or taking our pants off like a crazy person. I said, people would think we're crazy. So I'm talking in a space where most of the people are heavily medicated, officially crazy and doing that stuff. And everybody got it. We all started laughing. Mm-hmm. And I tried in the past at the beginning uh, to, to share what I thought was the understanding. So, you know, there's mind, there's consciousness, there's thought, and they would be going, And it's fabulous to understand it that way. It's fabulous because I never would have seen, uh, listened to, I, I came into this community through Michael O'Neill, just listening to him and seeing your books and different things and people just being nice to me, regardless of what state I would show up in. And every time I, I would spend days afterward going, what do they see in me? What do they see in me? No, they can't. And I had this huge list of all the reasons they should dump me uh, uh, by the exit way. So compassionate understanding definitely for me is that, and thank you for the rambling today again. Uh, But uh, thank you for being in the world, guest host, but each and every one of you. Uh, and it did specifically help this week. I didn't realize how deeply that peace part was working. Uh, my mom uh, passed on, uh, which is a blessing because she she was uh, not really conscious for the last month after a car accident. And um, I realized in the last two years, this was her seventh hospitalization. She was 87 and falls and breaking bones and that kind of stuff. And it was the fourth time they were telling us about imminent death. And all the preceding times that she would be hospitalized and the death warnings, I would just run the the record, the scenario, what people call, however you want to call it. I was experiencing thoughts of all the usual accepted stuff, anger, angst, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And now I just was there. And in, in mid, during these two years, because of this community and everything, I was able to go, oh, I have a choice here. I don't have to believe that. It feels intense, but I don't have to believe that. And that's amazing. And I'm going to stop because it's, you're supposed to it's be reminded me of a really good story, actually. Um, and, and this kind of also speaks to, I guess, where I started, which is the principles are a cornerstone and they're a fundamental part of this whole picture, but they're not the only thing. So um, my girlfriend works in St. Andrew's mental health uh, charity. So she works in, in wards with high security. You know, sometimes it's four to one. So there's four, four security people for one person. Um, and, you know, some of them have got brain injuries. Uh, some of them have got you know, really severe disorders. Um, and sometimes you'll speak to people and it doesn't matter how loving or compassionate you are, they won't be able to hear it. They won't be able to hear it. And as you were saying that, it reminded me of um, of, of being able to, to still be in the unknown, even when you're sure that what you're doing is pointing in the right direction. So I have uh, a client who's a, the stepson of, of one of my own clients. <clears throat> and he has really acute OCD. I mean, we're talking debilitating can't shower, can't dress, can't go to school, etc. And I always come from the starting point of, oh, I'll just have a conversation with them. You know, there's nothing wrong with him. As soon as he has the insight, as soon as he can see that there's nothing wrong with himself, then he'll be on the path to recovery. So that's, that's my starting point. Yeah, I mean, always, doesn't matter who it is. And I, and I had a few sessions with him and it was getting worse. He was getting worse. Yeah. And so I started to kind of doubt myself. I was like, oh, wait a minute. You know, he's not getting it. <laughs> oh my God. I must be, uh, I'm not obviously saying, I'm not listening properly because I'm not getting where he's not getting it. And 
I've I've been lucky enough to 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 meet someone called Fiona McGuire. Some of you will know her from from this group, and she's an energy healer, right? So that's what she does. She she sees people's and she reads energy the same way we we read faces and listen to uh, people's conversations. And it was in that moment of curiosity of not knowing and going, well, what have I missed here? And we were having a conversation, and I was having a conversation with his stepdad, not even him. And it just occurred to me that there was, there was a blockage somewhere. I'm not quite sure how I kind of saw this, but there was, there was a blockage somewhere that was preventing him hearing something further. And I said, did something happen to him at birth? This was the insight that came up through me. I said, did something happen to him at birth? He just went, yeah, he was separated from his mum for, for two hours. Straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it suddenly all the bits fell into place for me. It's like, because uh, I know that in general, people's behavior is a strategy in some way, shape or form. It's the bacteria doing their thing. They're trying to survive. And he created the OCD. The OCD was part of his strategy to survive. And of course it was like, ah, that's the blockage. That's the blockage. And I said, would he be interested in having an energy healing? And by this stage, you know, the stepdad and the mum were just kind of like, we can't even live our lives at the moment, so we'll, we'll give it a go. Anyway, they had the session a couple of weeks ago and um, uh, got a text pretty much within the hour saying um, he's had a shower for the first time in six months and he came out and he cried and he said, I'm okay now. Now, this was energy healing and I, I don't know what she does. She reads people's energies and she unblocks it. Now, I don't know how she does that but she does something and I'm willing to say that I don't know what that is. Well, but something she did made a huge impact on him and a lot of the other people that I referred to her as well. So this is what we're talking about. Sorry. Well, no. I don't know. I don't know, what, I don't know if it does no. and I don't know what, what, but well, it happens. What, what I do know is what I don't know. <laughs> well, it happens it. naturally when I was a kid, uh, four or five years old, my parents were having a cocktail party for my dad's sales team. Long story short, I was looking at through the door and I had no words, no concept, all, all big stuff, adult stuff. And all I knew that was this man and in my body without being debilitated, my, I knew his head was really, really hurting. And without words, I just walked into the party and was, I was supposed to be quiet, but I walked into the party and uh, I put my hands each side and I just went ouch and I felt like a, in my five four five year old head I felt like a big tree and there was this living flow of something something that went through my body and I just thought okay done and I gave him a kiss and that's it and uh, apparently he had been having migraines forever and I spent most of my youth uh, being a mirror to people's state and thoughts until I was told that it was warped and not okay. So I stopped it. And, and that is part of the equation. Well, equation, it's not an equation, but it's all the multifacets. And that's why I love that because with this understanding and we can come and just be with people and like you just did, if it's an energy heat, healing and that we go for that if it's if it's a practical hands-on uh, nutrition thing we go for that too we are in this form that's, well, that, that to me is i think really the starting point because to, to to me to kind of not be willing to listen to all the other stuff that's happening and the research and the way that science is doing its thing and yes i know it's in the world of the form I know it's in the world of form, but to me, it's, it's like the patent office in the 1800s saying that we've run out. There's no, nothing is ever, there's nothing new going to be invented. That to me is, is similar rather than saying, look, we've got a direction here. We know that we're the creators. We don't know whether we are the creators or whether there's the bacteria doing it or whether it's infinite intelligence trying to survive or whatever. We're just giving it words. We're calling it metaphors. Yeah. But there's, it's happening through us and we know that because we can feel it. We can experience it. We know it's happening through us. Well, that's kind of a useful starting point. And then, you know, as, as I always say to people, it's like, well then, so what? Well, 
that points to how the system operates you know that that points towards how we are experiencing life that's a really useful thing to know when you think that life is happening to you rather than through you <laughs> it's like that's a game changer <laughs> and all of the beautiful stuff that can happen with all that the Deepak Chopra in the Book of Secret does a beautiful, um, similar to what you just said, he speaks about how each and every one of our cells, he, he does the correlation, the two things, the spiritual and the physical, as a scientist and a doctor, and what our cells do and what are the spiritual virtues. And everything our body and our cells and bacteria are down to that level, are working in what the 3P community would go in consciously through mind and our experience. Uh, and it's quite beautiful. It, it's almost like, uh, not a psalm, but almost poetic uh, in the way he describes it. It's really cool. So let me, thank you, Renata and Damien. I want to now, with the people that are on this call, um, if they want to speak to this now for me, so I can see this going two ways. Okay. This just screwed me up even more. I thought the principles are simple. I thought this is a three principles group. Now you're introducing the form and energy and we're talking about all these different things now and it can be incorporated with yoga and uh, swimming naked or whatever it is. And I just don't know now, where do I begin now? Damien, if someone, was coming to you as a, a as a practitioner and said, "Look, I want to share this stuff to a group of um, group of whatever group of plumbers or a group of salesmen or a group of at a recovery center. Who knows? It doesn't matter. People are people. What would you say to them for people that are on this call?" So uh, the 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 doing part is actually very simple. You just, you just show up and listen, listen from a place of love. There you go. That's it. Insights will tell you what to do. I love that. If so that if they, if, they, if they don't, it's because you haven't listened enough. <laughs> there you go. That's the doing. <laughs> so there's, so, 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 let me, so in your point of view, okay. So with what you just said, because I have a feeling when this go, goes up, people are going to have a lot of, a lot of comments to say about this, which I'm, I'm looking forward to, but the essence of what you're saying is still the same. Show up and respond to what shows up. I don't know. Neither do you. Let's start from that place. Now, everything else you said about the form and formless, and I think you did say this in the beginning, you're saying from what I have experienced, from what I have seen, this is what it looks like. So you're, you're, you're not, this is not saying if I'm hearing this right, this is the truth. This is how I'm seeing it. And I think everyone else should see it. You're saying there might be more to the story. Am I correct? And maybe you can expand on that. Definitely is more. <laughs> yeah, that's guaranteed. There's more to the story without a doubt. And, and yeah, what, how, how fun is it that we're, we're alive right now to be able to experience that part. Everything that has ever happened in the infinite universe has led to us being right here, right now, being curious. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And, and having the ability to be curious. That's, that's, that's a game changer. I mean, wow, that's, yeah. It just blows me away every time I even think about it. It's like, wow, how lucky are we? <laughs> Absolutely, and matter of fact, um, what, what's, what's, what I've seen lately is, that whether I agree or disagree with people or whether they agree or disagree with me, people, whatever's allowing us to agree or disagree, that's what I think people are pointing to, that, that capacity. And we keep forgetting that because we get back into what, we, what are we disagreeing with? What are we agreeing with? And I think what you're pointing to is there's a lot more to agree or disagree with. There's a lot more to be seen or unseen or whatever you want to say, but what a what an amazing thing to have to be able to do all that, to be able to do all the stuff that that uh, we can and can't see or agree or disagree with. And I think that power is absolutely amazing. I agree. Well, it's like it's like that, you're alive if you can do any of it. You're alive, 
And like, even when I'm in pain now, it reminds me that I'm alive. Even when I'm hurting, it reminds mm -hmm. me of alive. So there's no way or ne necessity for me to run away from it. It's a reminder for me that I'm alive. So that capacity of itself is absolutely brilliant for me. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me see what, where are we? Well, we have seven, eight minutes. Uh, Iwin has his hand up. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Speaketh your truth. Yes, speaketh my truth. Hi, Damon. Uh, hi, 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 everyone. Uh, what I'm hearing and what all of you are saying is um, the basics of the operating system we are all part of or part of us. Um, and that the community, we are good at, at con making a concept of, it, of, of that basic stuff that we are part of. And when we can relax in our feelings, thinking, basic, we know where to go. That's not the, just the, Damon's book, Do Nothing, was one of my first two. Uh, I started with, with, with Michael Neal in 2006. It went on with Sedona Method 2007, I think. And, um, and the works with, with Byron Katie and, and uh, Eckhart Tolle and, and a lot of things, searching, searching, searching. And in 2012, when I heard the principles for the first time, I was driving a cab in my hometown late one mid night in the winter. Uh, it was much, much, much snow, almost two meters. And you can imagine the light and the snow and the buildings and the windows and all of a sudden everything was so beautiful and then i know oh god i'm creating this picture myself and life from that point isn't hasn't been the same i can assure you it was not only the, the, the city that was beautiful, it was the, the people around me. It was, well, it hit me like a brick of thumbs. Thumbs up. Mm, I love it. Nice, no, great. You just, you just gave me a really lovely kind of viewpoint of, you know, if we are bacteria just kind of like doing its thing, like trying to survive, then it's equipped us with like a multi cinema system with like iPads and phones and, you know, projectors. And it's like, we are in the, we're in like the super cool turbo version. I'd rather be, I'd rather be me than a book, you know, <laughs> or a pencil. Pen, pencils don't get to have that experience. I do. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. We get to play with it. We just get to play with it. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if we are, just consciousness experiencing itself or however you want to put it. If we are, you know, this infinite intelligence just experiencing itself, then we have got, we are at the front of the plane flying the Concorde. I mean, you know, we really are. It's just, yeah. And, and, and the key word there is play. Play with your thoughts. Play with your infinite opportunities. Because it's mm. possible. Yeah. And then we forget, and then we just take ourselves too seriously, and then we forget to get to have fun <laughs> until we, until we remember. <laughs> yeah, and we do it over and over again. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. Thanks for that. Thank you. And I was going to say, uh, I'm actually glad we're doing a part two of this, but I because th I think we just scratched the surface with some of the dialogue that we're having, and I'm I'm looking forward. I do want to get. A little bit more into the science. I, I, I loved where you were going with uh, incorporating 
uh, how you incorporate, not incorporate, but how the principles are in everything. Not, it shouldn't be I exclusive, it should be inclusive. Um, I'll give a quick story before we leave and I'll give you the last minutes to talk. I remember uh, for, I was told that whatever someone says, this is like mindfulness, I, I have to be very clear to let them know it's not. Or if they say it's like yoga to say, no, it's not like yoga. Last time I went to the recovery center, I, they said, so is this like mindfulness? I said, yes. Someone else said, well, is this like walking your dog? I said, yeah. They said, well, is this like yoga? I said, absolutely. And so someone raised their hand and said, how the hell is this like everything? And I said, that's a great question. Let's start from there. And it was a brilliant hour because for the first time, I didn't have to resist every single person or say, shit, now they're, they're going to ruin my talk because now I have to battle their concepts with mine. Instead, it was, let's bring it all together. How can this possibly all come from the same place? And Damien, you just kind of solidified the direction I was going and how, how free I was to go in that direction. And you, you, this whole talk was from that point of view. And I absolutely want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, this was awesome. Mm, I love that story. That's brilliant. It's so cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the starting point. This is, this is, it's, all, it's all the same stuff. Always was, always will be. So what would be, you know, like I said, this is not going to be your final thing to say, but, uh, you know, you're going to be on another webinar, but what, what do you want to leave everyone with for, for the weekend? For, or just for today, think, just from what you said. I think have fun is really important. I think, you know, if we uh, it's kind of the hedge and your bets thing, isn't it? It's like, well, yeah, we could, we could be around forever and we could have lots of different experiences or this could be our one shot. Well, why don't we just... And, and, and this is where love comes into it, I think, because if we, this is where presence, you know, this is where meditation, I think, is, is so cool as well. Because, you know, when we're present, when we're present in the moment, whether it's with our kids or with a dog or with a, you know, with our next door neighbor or, or whether we're, you know, if we're actually in the moment and, and we're, loving being having that ability to, to 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 be alive to 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 be able to manifest an experience through the power of thought and the power of consciousness and then the infinite energy that's giving us plugging us all into the system and if we have a realization that that's all we got then you know i always say that if you go to a um uh if you go to somewhere like um uh a hospital where if you go to the, the wards where people don't have much time left, there's a real kind of feel sense of for the, for the ones, I mean, what are the hospices? If you go to hospices, there's a real kind of sense of fun. People are, they realize they haven't got much time left. And I think it's so easy to kind of think, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got all this time. We've got all this time to go. I mean, I've had a couple of things recently where pe people's lives have been cut short very, very fast, surprisingly fast. And, that to me is pointing me back to, I think if we just are in the moment and just having fun. And, and that, this is where the principles is, I think, beautiful because to me, what, 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 uh, what, they, what they tell me, that's the wrong way to put it, but, but what I get from it is, it's okay to not be okay. That, that to me is a real game changer. It's that I, I can be in shit thinking and be okay with it. And that then takes you back to fun. It's like, well, I could have fun being feeling shit. <laughs> and it, it just means that, you know, you just, it get, brings you back to being present then. Um, so go and have some fun. And that, and that can even be things like, you know, responding to people on Facebook and just not getting in your head about it and just, yeah, have fun. I'll take that uh, and run with that. Absolutely. And Thank you for everyone. There was a quick hour for me, but, um, I, and I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. This was a two hour notice and you guys jumped in and there's a plenty of people that came oh, yeah. and, uh, I'm, I'm not shocked to be honest with you. We have an awesome crew and a bunch of amazing people in this place. I would be very, you guys are going to see this firsthand. Um, I'm going to post this in my group, obviously, and uh, in our group. And I can't wait to see what kind of responses we get. And it'll be a perfect segue for part two, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, wait a minute, what did you mean by this? Or this is crazy or whatever they're going to say, or that I'm handsome. I get that all the time. So we'll find out what people say. And then from there, folks, 
I would love to have all you guys back on, uh, ask questions, share your insights like Renata beautifully did today. And uh, I'm looking forward to having all you guys again. And the next person that's going to be on before Damien is going to be um, the great Amy Johnson. We're going to have her on. And then actually uh, Dominic Scafidi is another one that we're going to have on. So we have a lot of pretty awesome people coming up next. And of course, Damien is going to be on again. And I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you so much for joining us again today. And Damien, from the bottom of my heart, this was awesome, as I, as I expected. And uh, I'll see you guys all soon. Take care. Love you, man. Take care. Love you, buddy. See ya. Thank you. Thank Love you. you.